Amen. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Anybody else wake up this morning with their mind stayed on, stayed on the Lord? Amen. 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 Pray with me. Gracious and glorious God, today, O oh Lord, I just thank you for being here in your house once again with your people, O oh Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to give you praise and to worship you today, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh God, that this word that you have for us this morning gets us thinking more about you and what we need to do, O oh God, to tighten up our relationship, to make it deeper, O oh God, with you and one another. What does it mean, O oh God, to love my neighbor as myself? I pray, O oh God, that your word falls on good ground. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. So we had a few readings today from uh, the New Testament and uh, Romans and Galatians. A, a word from the Psalms this morning. Um, and so the sermon is, because of that reading, there's a couple other scriptures that I would have liked to add to that, but I, I did not, right? Because sometimes it's, it's heavy, heavy on the scripture. So from what was read this morning, bear with me. We'll get through this together. Amen. Amen. So the book of Romans, the book of Romans, um, I, I love the book of Romans because it starts off one way, talking about uh, Jesus, our relationship with Christ, our sin, and then it, it, it moves subtly into um, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. And it talks about as, as people of God, our relationship, how to continue to build our relationship with God, right? And this book of Romans that I'm, I'm going to focus on specifically today, um, it has a lot to say about salvation. Because the title of this sermon is Salvation Through Christ, right? You know, I usually change it. I'm not going to change it today. I'm going to leave it. But salvation has been a through this book of Romans, of leading people to Jesus. And here's a few things out from this, this book of Romans. Every human is a sinner. Romans 3 and 23. God's penalty for, death, for sin is death. And that's Romans 6 and 23. In his great love, God has made provision for the salvation of sinners. And that will be found in Romans 5 and 8. And then each person must put their trust in God's son, Jesus Christ. And that's in Romans chapter 10. Now, I want to talk just a, a few minutes based off the scriptures read today. Uh, salvation through Jesus. Now, in this complicated world, right, and it can be complicated sometimes, why? It, it just is, right? But God 
has made salvation easy. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's what it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Simple. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hmm. Certainly, it has to be more than that. I can hear some of you saying in your head, certainly, it, it can't be that easy. Well, it is. It's as easy as one, two, three. We make it complicated. When I say we, I mean you, humanity. We make it complicated. We read the scriptures. We got this big Bible right here. We read the scriptures, and everybody has their own interpretation as to what the scripture means. And then what the word of God says, the simplicity of it, gets mixed up and it becomes complicated. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, whoever is this side or the this side. I'm just saying what I'm saying right now. But there are three things I want to pull out this morning. Three. Number one, admit you are a sinner in need of a savior. That's number one. Our sin separates us from God. We don't like to talk about sin. We don't like to use the S word. We want to use another word for it, but it is what it is. Amen. And it's sin that separates us from God. Not loving your neighbor as yourself. I'm not even going to go to the Ten Commandments. I want to just talk about the things that, that we do every day or don't do that separates us, right? There, now, there is that, 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 that verse that says nothing can separate us from the love of God, but we separate ourselves yeah. from God. Yeah. Let, me, let me make that clear. I'm not saying that God separates from us. I'm saying we separate ourselves from God. A relationship with Jesus begins with our admission that we need God. We must admit you need God to do three things. You need God to forgive you for your sins, right? Those attitudes or actions that don't meet the standards that we're supposed to have as Christians, as believers. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's in the book of John. That's not me. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what, what I think. I'm just going to give you the word. And then you can take it and do with it what you will. You need God to give you eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, that's in Romans. Paul, right? Paul wrote all these things to, to show us, to bring us back to Christ. Because he saw the people needed a reminder of where their help came from, right? They were working hard, hard. I got to do all these things for God to love me. I have to do all these things to become a child. No, all you have to do is believe in Jesus, that he was born, that he died, that he rose again, Crucified in the middle in there. He rose again. That's what you have to believe. Anything else that you're telling yourself outside of what Jesus has done is a lie to yourself. Yeah. 
You need to show, we need God to show us his purpose in our life. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came so that we may have life and have it to the full. That is the NLT version, right? The New Living Translation, which makes it plain. No thieves, thou's. I'm making it, right? We're going to make it plain, right? The second thing is number two, the second point. Believe that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins. Do you believe that? Or are, are you steady trying to do what you can do to put yourself back in relation? We no longer live under the law now. Jesus came. He fulfilled the law, and now we are under grace. Grace. We know about grace. I hope you know about grace. Let me rephrase that. I hope you know about grace. Right? Trust the Lord Jesus to be um, the payment for the forgiveness of our sins. It is by grace that you are saved and not by yourself. It is a gift of God, not as a result of the works that anyone may boast. Ephesians, second chapter. Read it. Sometimes we have to go back and read it to remind ourselves exactly where we are and whose we are, and why we do what we do, right? Because life, that complicated life I talked about in the beginning, sometimes gets to us, and we forget. The penalty of, for your sin is death. God loves you so much, he provides a way for you to escape the penalty, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That still stands true today, right now, right? And Jesus can and will save anyone from an eternity with God. He died and rose again for your justification to put your relationship with God in right standing. It is not through anything that we do that justifies us, that makes us righteous. It is Jesus Christ alone that does it. It is only through Jesus. It is only through Jesus. I don't know what other way to say it. I can shout it. I can have them put it on the screen. The only way is Jesus Christ. You don't have to do the work. Why? Because the work has already been done. He said it is finished. It's done. Amen? It's done. And the last thing. Call upon Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Confessing Jesus as Lord means to commit total control of your life to Christ. What is our issue? We want to be in control. Bailey, where you at? I'm going to talk to you. What's our issue? Control? We want to be in control? Right? I'm going to pick on you today. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Right? We want to be in control. Listen, I don't know if any of you know, I do not like to be driven anywhere. I don't like to get in anybody's car on the passenger side, in the back seat, in the third row. I, I want to take myself. If I get in the car with you, can I drive? That's my control issues trying to take over because I don't want nobody driving me anywhere. Right? True story. One day, my son drives horribly. <laughs> Both of them, the youngest one and the oldest one. My daughter, she's better. She's better now. She's better. I was really ill. I couldn't even walk. And I was like, just come, come help me get up. 
I get in the car, I could get where I have to go. And they're like, Mom, you are out of your mind. And I'm like, I may be, but you're not going to get me in that passenger side. I know where I want to go. I know how fast I want to go. And I know the route I want to go. And you're not going to do anything I want you to do. By the time I woke up, because I must have passed out, I was at the hospital, and they took me. So God had to knock me out in order for, for me to let go of that control that I thought I had to get to where I had to go. But it was a humbling experience because I said, oh, wow, they, they got me here in one piece. The people are taking care of me, right? Control, that control that we think. That, that we have, we got to let it go and realize that it, it is only through Christ that we have what we have. Receive Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Jesus said, for as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Even to those who believe in his name, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You giving him ownership of your life, he becomes our new boss. God drives you. God leads you. God takes you to where you need to go. God helps you make those decisions that are so crucial to life. But we have to give up control. And we all do it. You can say, well, Pastor, at some point, we all have some control issues that we need to let go of. Right? In the church. Well, I've always done this. I don't need your help. I got this. I don't need anybody's help. I got it. But thank you. Thank you for offering. But I, I, I got it. And at the same time, I can't believe, I st why I always have to do this? Well, people asked you to help. <laughs> they told you they would help you. Why? why? Why do you insist on doing it yourself when you have this whole room of people that want to help? Amen. So let's, let me conclude with this. Jesus died for us so that we could live. He bled for us so our debts could be paid. He was forsaken so we could be forgiven. He was rejected so we could be adopted into the family of the King of Kings. We stand in the victory that he has won. The story did not end on the cross. It was just the beginning. The grave where he once laid is empty. Not because his body was moved, but because he got up. That's the difference. Nobody moved him. He got up for us. Death has lost its grip on us. Hell has no power over us. We are sons and daughters of the most high, of the cross, the empty grave. Remember, Salvation was given to us through Jesus Christ alone. Simple as one, two, three. ABC. I will sing the song for you, but I can't remember the words. Amen? It's a perfect time to, uh, if, if you haven't given your, your life to Christ, it's a perfect time to do that, to confess that Jesus is Lord and that you can only be saved through Christ. First off. Secondly, 
if you've fallen away from the church, you left for a while, you came back, you left, you came back. I get it. Been there. Done that, right? This, the, the door is open for you. God is always standing there with his arms open wide saying, come, come, come to me, right? Remember that, that God loves you no matter what. You don't have to work for it. The work has already been done the price has been paid. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you.